All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be checking out OP07. That's right, we are going to be doing, this is going to be a little six-part set where, where I go over every single color. Um, in OP06, I think I did like my top 10 from each color. And there were quite a few people who liked it, but then there were quite a few that didn't like it and they wanted me to, to review the entire set next time. And guys, I think that's probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a, you know, a full set review this time. So spoiler warning for those who, uh, you know, so at the time of me recording this video and around the time of me um, releasing it, this weekend, OP07 will be released in the East. So I think it's only appropriate that we go over these cards now so that when we see the new deck lists pop up and when we when, when I start reviewing some of the newer tournaments from the East... We're going to know what we're looking at, right? We're going to know what's going on. So, guys, uh, let's just go ahead and dive straight in. First up is going to be red. Again, spoiler warning now. Leave if you don't want to, you know, now's your time to get out. If, if you don't want to see uh, any spoilers that are going to be pretty far in the future for us in the West. We still have got, we've got like around three to four months before this is going to come out in the West. Just giving you guys a heads up. All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive into it. So, first up is Monkey D. Dragon. We're finally getting a dragon card. Somehow we're getting that before Rayleigh. I, I, I can't even, guys. Rayleigh's my absolute favorite character, and I do wish that uh, they would bust out Rayleigh because I, I need Rayleigh, guys. I need the character Rayleigh so bad. But okay, let's just, you know, let me make sure everything's set up. Okay, we're good. So first up is dragon. It's a five life mono red leader, revolutionary army type. Activate main once per turn. Give up to two total of your currently given Dawn cards <laughs> to one of your characters. That is worded so strange. But essentially what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to take two Dawn that is already attached to one character. Actually, it could be the leader as well, I believe. But then you can change it to two other, or excuse me, change the two Dawn to another character, not back to it. You can't do it the other way around where it's on a character and then you give it to the leader. It has to be on Dragon and then you can give it uh, to someone else. Uh, this looks like just a slightly better version of Luffy's effect. Um, you know, the, the what is it, ST-01 Luffy, the red Luffy. Now, it is true that, you know, Luffy is obviously a little bit different because you're, you're moving the, um, you know, you're moving the Dawn that is rested. So you're, you're technically, it's like you're gaining a one, one Dawn to attack with that turn after tapping out with everything. But with this card, you're still going to operate essentially the same way where, where you're playing out for the entire turn. And, and then you're going to attach to, you know, to, you, you just have to be able to attach two Dawn to a character. That's the main thing is you can't just rest all your Dawn. It does have to already be attached to your leader or to a character. Okay. Um, and yeah, but other than that, though, it seems very strong. Seems seems very good. I think this leader is going to see some play. A lot of people like Dragon as a character, even though he's pr pretty mysterious. A lot of people just like to play red decks as well. And this is kind of, like I said, I feel like this is kind of Luffy 2.0. It's almost like a straight-up power creep version of Luffy. Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think down in the comment section below. And don't worry, we're probably not going to spend that much time on all the cards. It's just, you know, with the leaders, you do have to spend a little bit of extra time on. Because as we're going through the set, we need to be able to, you know, know what the, the cards are going for that are coming out. Okay, so that's about it for this one. If I were to rate this leader, I'll go back to ratings for this. Uh, out of 10... I give this leader, like, just, I think, I don't know, he's probably just, like, the leader effect is just a solid, like, 7 out of 10. It's not bad, but I don't think it's insane either. I just think it's a really solid way to get two extra damage in. So, very nice. Okay, and then we got the parallel art uh, for it. Yeah, looks awesome. And one, th one more thing I'll say about uh, Dragon is it's going to it's gonna really depend on, like, the characters in this deck that make this leader good because as long as you have the two dawn to spare a turn where you can attach it to a character and swing with then this will be good so th that will really determine how strong this uh this leader will be but like the leader effect in a vacuum with no like you know with no character in it well you know no character interaction with it other than the effect itself i think this is just a solid 7 out of 10 or 7.5 out of 10 okay there's the parallel art uh not a huge fan of the parallel art i'm not gonna lie uh, don't don't hate on me in the comment section below. All right, next up we've got Ain. Ain is a seven cost, six thousand power, zero counter, red film neo navy type character. With the effect of on play, set the power of up to one of your opponent's characters to zero during this turn. 
Wow. Uh, that is very powerful. That is a very... Because you have to imagine that basically says... It's almost like this card reads, like in my mind, like just thinking like as a player, this card pretty much reads um, pay seven and tap this char and tap one of your active characters or, you know, one of your characters that can attack and KO target character. Like that's almost how it reads to me. It, it's just so powerful. Like, yeah, people can still block and stuff. I'm not saying it's 100%, but hopefully y'all see what I'm saying. Dropping someone down to zero is extremely powerful and... Um, you're going to be able to pretty much swing over anything with this. So if they have if if they have a, a Charlotte Linland, right, like a, a ten cost twelve k power Charlotte Linland tapped, you can just play this card, and now it's a zero, and you can attack into it with anything, even like your little searchers, and be able to KO it if if your opponent can't counter out and block out of it. So j just really powerful. Uh, this card's excellent. It, it's a seven cost six k. It's a little weak statted, but six thousand power is more than enough to get the job done. You know, at any stage of the game by just attaching a dawn or two. So um, I'm going to give this a, I'm going to give this like a, probably like a 6.5 out of 10 because it doesn't have a counter. It's not exactly breaking the game. It does require your opponent to have a character that you need to worry about to use this effect on. So for example, against like aggro decks, this is kind of a dead card completely. It doesn't have a counter. So I'll give it like a 6.5 out of 10. Okay, next up we've got Outlook 3. I'll try and pick up the pace here, guys. Uh, next up we have Outlook 3. This is a 2 cost, 0 power, 1000 counter, go a kingdom. Activate main, you may trash this character, give up to two of your opponent's characters minus 2,000 power during this turn. Ah, uh, man. Um, okay. I guess it depends on the deck you're trying to put this in. I, and I think there are cards that could probably benefit from this, like Fire Fist and, and the, uh, I think it's like a six call Sabo, a six or seven call Sabo that can KO up to two characters. Uh, but in my mind right now, the only thing that's like going through my mind is Red Purple uh, Law. When it comes to red decks or, or red yellow sabo, and I know that's just that's just my mind, right? Uh, and and for for those kind of decks, this card's not very good. But like I said, maybe for like a revolutionary army type deck, even though this is Goa Kingdom, maybe for like a revolutionary army type deck, this could be pretty solid because, like I said, you'll, you'll minus two thousand power two different characters, and then you'll be able to like pop it with a fire fist or, or pop it with um, that that sabo card. Uh, there, there's a, there's a I think it's like a six or seven call Sabo that can that can um, pop two characters with, with a combined power of like four thousand or something like that or six thousand. So this could be good in that. But overall, I'm not a huge fan of this card. I don't think it's a bad card. I just don't think it's a good card. I'm li literally just going to give this like a five out of ten, just very middle of the road. Uh, next up, we got Curly to Dan. Okay. Uh, I better put my glasses on. That's a lot of reading. Uh, this is a two cost, three thousand power, one thousand counter, uh, mountain bandits type card, um, <clears throat> type character. Excuse me. Effect is on play. You may trash one card from your hand. Okay. Look at five cards from the top of your deck. Reveal up to one character card with two thousand power or less. Reveal up to one character card. Notice there's no color restriction. Uh, with two thousand power or less, and add it to your hand then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. Okay, um, it looks like this is... So it's funny how, like, I was talking about power creep with um, with uh, Dragon, with the leader. But in this case, this is almost like a nerf, like a power nerf, because I, it's almost like they thought... <laughs> I guess they came to the conclusion or the, or the realization, maybe, that Curly to Dan was too powerful for what it did. Because remember, it did get banned for a while, for a very short while. And I guess it's almost like they're trying to say this is what the card should have been, maybe? I don't know. Reveal up to... You know what's really interesting about this? Okay, so you may trash one card from your hand, look at five cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one character card with 2,000 power or less and add it to your hand. So, in other words, like, you'll probably be able to... Like, if this was in, like, a red-yellow deck... You could, like, search up Shira Hoshi. If this is in a red-black deck, you could snag back Rebecca, right? Because isn't that zero power? I'm pretty sure Rebecca's zero power. This is a very interesting card, is all I'm going to say. Uh, you are trashing a card from hand, but you're doing a top five search. Uh, and then, of course, place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. I'm curious to see what people do with this card. I'm going to give this, like, a, I'm going to give it, like, a six out of ten, because it does require, like, a lot of setup to build around this. But it does have a lot of potential. And as the game goes on, this, this card only gets stronger. So really solid, really solid card. Okay, next up is Karina. So this is a, a zero power card right off the bat here that would be able to go, you know, they'd be able to search up with um, the Curly to Dan that we were just looking at. 
Uh, and this one is a, so three costs, zero power, 1,000 counter, film, Grand Tessero type character. With effect, it's a blocker, and on play, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 2,000 power during this turn. Okay. Um, so again, <clears throat> now this one seems like it's almost geared towards um, Red Purple Law. Because of, you know, how it, this is almost like, it's not, I don't, I don't know. It, it is film, because there is like a red purple version of Law that, that runs film with Buena Fiesta and everything. But this is just an interesting card that's just decent. Um, I still feel like Otama takes the spot of wherever this card might be. Because, first of all, Otama can one cost minus 2,000 power. And it's a one cost, or excuse me, and it's a, you know, a 2k counter. This card is like a blocker, so it's around the same like power level as Otama, just in a different way. It's 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 a very different version of Otama. I feel like a different flavor of Otama. So I'm I'm gonna give this like a, I think this is like probably a six out of ten. You know, I, it might be a little better. Maybe it's like a seven out of ten, but I don't think it's too much better than that. Wow. Okay. Very very nice uh, parallel art there. Very nice. Very very nice. Uh, next we got uh, Starry. 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 This is a one cost, one thousand power, one thousand counter. Goa Kingdom, Goa Kingdom time. Another, a lot of Goa Kingdom stuff going on here. Um, on play, excuse me. The effect is on play. You may give your one active leader minus five thousand power. Oh, that's right. Vivi is um, Goa Kingdom, right? Or no, she's Alabasta. Interesting. Okay, never mind. Uh, disregard. Anyway, uh, you may give your one active leader minus five thousand power during this turn. Draw one card and trash one card from your hand. Wow, how incredibly uh, mediocre! I have to say, guys, like, like, just how how incredibly mediocre. Let me um, hang on one second. Let me move. I gotta check something real quick. There we go. So, I'm not crazy, am I? I'm I'm pretty sure that Nephiltari Vivi is Alabasta Kingdom. I, I have to bring it up over here, guys. I'm sorry, because I I feel like I'm losing my mind or something. Yeah, she's Alabasta Kingdom. So, so what is this Goa Kingdom? Is there like a Goa Kingdom leader that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head? I don't think so. Oops. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, I, I don't think so. The only thing Goa that I can find are the uh, the three brothers that are yellow. The, the two cost three brothers from SD, SD13. And then like the stuff we're looking at now. So maybe they're preparing for a future leader. Or maybe they just don't want this to be searchable. But I, I could not imagine why this would not <laughs> why this could not be searchable um it, it's just a one cost on play minus five thousand power to your to your active leader so you can't even swing first and then draw one card trash one card this is like specifically for vivi in my personal opinion uh but we'll, we'll have to see what happens in the future i'm just gonna give this like i'm not gonna lie i feel like i feel like this is just like a three out of ten y'all tell me if i'm missing something on this card but it, it just seems insanely lackluster to me personally okay next up is dice Dice is a four cost, six thousand power, one thousand counter, um, van vanilla uh, film card, film Grand Tessero card. So just a solid, you know, five out of ten. Um, I will say this: uh, I know, I know, in previous videos when I used to rate these vanillas, certain vanillas are better than others, and I do think a four cost, six k. If you can get this on even curve, this card ends up being like a seven out of ten. It's just so crazy for tempo, but uh, you guys know what I'm saying. In general, I give vanillas a five out of ten though. Okay, Mr. Tanaka. We got a three cost, three thousand power trigger. Play this card blocker. Okay, yep, that's it. It's a film version. I feel like Red has another one of these. Isn't like Kobe? I, I believe there's a Kobe that does the exact same thing. Sorry guys, I, I guess we're doing a lot of homework while we do all this. Okay, let me bring up Kobe real quick. Yeah, there is literally a card. There is a card that is film and everything, just like this one called Kobe. That's a promotional card. Just uh, uh, just literally identical, except Kobe is film Navy, and this card is film Grand Tessero. Kobe is a strike type, and Mr. Tanaka is a special type. That That is like the actual only difference. So uh, whatever, you know, I think this is fine. It does say note about errors in OP07 Mr. Tanaka and OP0709 Monkey D. Luffy illustration. Uh, I'm not going to mess with that right now, but apparently there's notes on, on that, some type of error. I'm just going to say this. I think the card is solid it does not have a 1k counter but this is like the three cost 1k counter uh 1000 power cards like um like uh, mi uh gosh boa hancock nefeltari vivi and and um brulee it's just like those but this one has 3000 power but it comes at the cost of not having a counter 
Honestly, with it being a 3,000 power card, I would actually just rather it have the counter. That's just me personally. But I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10 because it's just very average. Okay, Dogura and Magura. Dogura and Magura. Dogura and Magura. Don't know. Uh, this is a 2 cost 3,000 power slash uh, character. 1,000 counter mountain bandits. On play, up to one of your red characters with a cost of 1 gains double attack during this turn. <laughs> okay. That could be pretty interesting. Um, maybe maybe that Curly to Dan deck, or the Curly to Dan card we were talking about will have something like this in the deck, where you just have a bunch of one-cost red characters, and you can potentially give them double attack. Because I believe there's a one-cost Sanji. It's just a one-cost vanilla 3K Sanji. And with this kind of card, you can just buff him up and give him double attack. I, I think this card's pretty strong, actually. I'm not going to lie. I think this is a very powerful card. Uh, I'll, I'll give this um, I'll give this like a 7.5 out of 10. So, solid card. Solid. Uh, back wrap. This is a 3 cost, 4,000 power, 1,000 counter. Um, film, Grand Tessero type, blocker, and the effect of on your opponent's attack, you may trash one card from your hand up to one of your leader or character cards gains plus 2,000 power during this battle. So on your opponent's attack once per turn, you can trash a card to basically get plus 2,000 power during this battle. So this is nice. This basically... I do like that they're adding cards like this in the game. I think Red Green has another card like this for like the Red Green Odin deck where you can basically trash a card from your hand that, that had no counter on it and it's like you're getting a 2k counter from it. So I, I really do like cards like this that help you fix your hand and it allows you to build your deck a little more aggressively with a little more freedom. Big fan of this card. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. And it's a 3 cost 4k blocker with 1k counter. Yeah, th this might be like closer to an 8 out of 10. This is just an incredibly versatile card that you can include in just about any deck. Uh, you know, the, the, type, the types aren't special, but still, you know, we are seeing a lot of film love. So maybe um, a film deck will be able to pull this off. Uh, next up is Blue Jam. Uh, this is a 4 cost 5k, 1000 counter, red, Goa Kingdom, Blue Jam Pirates type. The effect is Dawn times 1, when attacking, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 2,000 power or less. Okay, um, hmm, that's interesting. This kind of, this this does give me Nefletari VV vibes, uh, the red-blue leader. This does give me, um, ser sorry guys, my nose is itching from my, from my mustache, that's why you keep, that's why you keep seeing me go like this. Um. But I, I get Neffel, I get VV vibes from this one, which is weird to say, you know, because of my name. But I do get Nefeltari VV vibes from this because it's a 4 cost 5k, 1k counter. And in, in decks like that, maybe you want to have cost reduction built in. But at the same time, this, I will just say this, like no matter what red deck you're running or whatever combination of red and other color you're running, this card with Chopper seems really strong. The, uh, the new 3 cost 4k Chopper from uh, EB01. Because that can minus 3,000 on attacking. So in combination with this card, could be very powerful. But it, I will say this. Generally speaking, I don't think this is a great card. But it's also not really a bad card. I'm just going to give it a 5 out of 10. Sorry, guys. I know that's kind of... I feel like I've given a lot of average scores. But some of these cards just seem incredibly average to me. And hey, again, if y'all ever disagree, like, hey, that card's way crazier than you thought. Y'all help me out down in the comment section below. You know, tell, tell me what I'm missing. Uh, next up is uh, Porch Porkimi. Porchimi? <laughs> I have no idea how to say this guy's name. But it's a 2 cost, 3,000 power, 1,000 counter, uh, red, Goa Kingdom, Blue Jam Pirates character. With the effect on play, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 1,000 power during this turn. So here we go. You know, that, that is comboing with this guy, Blue Jam. And, you know, the cost re or the power reduction stuff is so much more versatile than the cost reduction stuff. Because, first of all, power reduction can be comboed with cards like this to KO characters. And it just drops the power of the character, where if, if you don't have a card like this, it's just easier to KO it with the other characters. Whereas the cost reduction stuff, like, again, that's I'm talking about power reduction does that. Cost reduction, if you don't have the combo to, to use with it, then the card just, you know, <laughs> the cost reduction is worthless. So, very interesting. Uh, but I think this card's solid. I'm going to give this, like, a 5 out of 10. Nothing. It's not bad. It's not good. It's only 1,000 power off of being a vanilla curve, and then it also has the added utility of going minus 1,000 to a character to help you KO it. You know, this will basically turn a Borsalino into a 4 cost 5k uh, blocker. So, really solid. Uh, Masked Deuce. This is a 1 cost, 2,000 power, 1,000 counter, Spade Pirates. On play, if your leader is Portgoss D Ace, 
Look at five cards from the top of your deck. Okay, we got an Ace Searcher here. Reveal up to one Port Gusty Ace or Red Event and add it to your hand. Okay, so not, not a Whitebeard Pirate Search, just a, a Port Gusty Ace and, and Red Event Search and add it to your hand. Then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. Okay, um, not bad. This, you know, I know the ace players out there are probably thinking this is pretty good. But at, at the same time, uh, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, I don't play much ace. I'm just going to be completely honest with y'all. I don't play a lot of red decks in general, and I definitely don't play... I, I don't know if I've ever even played a game of ace. M may, maybe I've at least played a game on the sim, but that's about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, don't they build Whitebeard Pirates in that deck where you, where you run Ezo and you run like, you know, seven cost ace, obviously, and just like that whole package with a lot of events? And then you also run the, um, uh, there's a stage as well that goes with it. I, I can't remember the name of it. Um, but yeah, a card like this, I maybe you run this and Ezo in the deck now. I, I don't know. M maybe not. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. This is a searcher though, guys. I'm gonna, I'm always going to give a searcher like at least like a 6 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10. So very, very solid card. Um, Moda or Mata, Moda. This is a one cost, zero power, 2,000 counter. Here we go. Lulucia Kingdom. Lulucia Kingdom. Lulucia. Lulucia. <laughs> However you say that. Effect is your turn on play. Up to one of your Port Gossi Ace cards gains plus 2,000 power during this turn. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Again, you know, going back to Ace that we were just talking about. Um, you know, a card like this, searching up Ace and Events. A card like this as just a 2k counter that you'll also be able to buff your leader with later in the game. Your turn on play. Okay, interesting. It's interesting that they, uh, that they stress your turn on play. Because I think this would have been a cool card to cheat out somehow, like with a with a I, I don't know how you would do it, but it'd be cool to be able to cheat this out like on your opponent's turn and get plus two k for the uh, for the for the whole turn. Uh, but anyway, maybe that'd be too broken. Long story short, this, this card looks really solid, solid, very good two k counter. I'm going to give a seven out of ten. Two k counters I usually give way bigger scores to. Okay, here we go. We got a big card here. We got Monkey D Dragon, eight cost, nine thousand power, uh, no counter, uh, revolutionary army type. Effect is Rush, and then on play, give up to two Rested Dawn cards to your leader or one of your characters. Okay, now this is solid. Now this is really solid. The art looks incredible too. I'm a big fan of this art. Just that that stance, like that pose, is very menacing, and he's he's very much like you know what's up. You know, you know, <laughs> here I am. You know, what are you gonna do? To, you know, what are you gonna do about it? Um, but this card's coming in eight call swing for nine. Like on, on play, just rushing in for nine and giving two Rested Dawn cards to your leader or one of your characters. Okay, now it does say give up to two Rested Dawn cards to your leader or one of your characters. So he'll be able to put it on himself if I'm not mistaken. And someone correct me in the comment section below if I'm wrong about that. But then you'll be able to use your leader's effect. I'm sorry guys, we are going to go backwards just for a second here. You'll then be able to use your leader's effect and move that two Dawn around to you can... You can't move it back to your leader, unfortunately. Give up to two of your currently given Dawn cards to one of your characters. So so you will be able to give it to another character, but still, that's very powerful. So even if you play the card on curve, wherever it just was, oops, got a scam, uh, scam likely on my phone there. So even if you were to, um, you know, even if you were to play this card on curve, like if you have eight Dawn, if you plop this card down, you're going to be able to put two Rested Dawn on either this character or one of your other characters and then, you know, smash accordingly. And then whatever character just swung, you can move the Dawn from that one over to the other one with your leader's effect. Uh, very, very solid. Um, and I will say this, this seems like, this seems like it's going to be a great closer for my red, yellow Sabo deck. I'm just saying it is this, 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 and, um, a card we're going to look at later. I won't. I'll try not to give too many spoilers <laughs> within a spoiler video. Uh, but this card looks like it's going to be a very, very strong closer for any deck that runs red. Very powerful, because essentially it, it's you're paying eight and you're getting eleven thousand powers worth. You know, swinging because you know this card swings for nine. It's going to give two out, and then your and then your dragon leader is going to give two out as well to someone else. So it could be potentially just massive amounts of um, attack. Actually, so I guess with the leader included, you're paying eight and you're getting nine thousand plus four thousand. That's like thirteen thousand powers worth swinging that turn. Very powerful. Okay, then we got the alt art. Uh, this looks solid. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this style. I don't like where it's kind of scratchy looking. 
Uh, I'm not against it. I'm just not a huge fan of it. Uh, but, but it does look really cool. And one thing I have mentioned before in the past that I, I want to do eventually, I do want to do like a, um, you know how a lot of uh, a lot of content creators like to do tier lists for uh, leaders and stuff like that, it's like especially when a new set's coming out. I'm going to have to do a tier list for art eventually. And it's going to be spicy, you know, because not everyone has the same taste in art. You know, it's one thing to put leaders in a tier list because you know how they're going to perform. There is like some science, there is some numbers and math to it. But when it comes to art style, oh man, it's, you know, everything hits the fan. But anyway, I'll probably mess with that at some point. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below if you think that'd be a good idea or a bad idea. Okay, next up we have Galaxy Wink. Okay, not Death Wink, we've got Galaxy Wink. This is a one cost revolutionary army type um, event. Effect main up to one of your revolutionary army type characters gains plus 2,000 power during this turn. Then give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 1,000 power during this turn. Okay, and then uh, trigger activate this card's main effect. Well, well, that's that could be very strong. Um, oh, but it's characters. I was say the trigger would have been so insane if you could give it to a leader or a character because it's plus two thousand power during this turn, uh, and then then minus one thousand power to one of the characters. Uh, but as is, this is still very powerful. This is basically a pay one three thousand power swing. Right, because you're you're reducing the cost of one of their characters by one thousand, and you're boosting one of your characters by plus two thousand. Um, now it cannot target the leader. Again, nothing can target the leader in this card. The the buff or the or the um the nerf, you know, or the deduction. None of it can target a leader. It everything has to target characters. But still, still very powerful, right? Like I mean, this this is a solid event. I just don't think this is anything crazy. Oh, guys, I almost forgot to rate this card. I'm rating this card a nine out of ten. Um, the dragon is like a 9 out of 10 in my book. It's not quite a 10 out of 10. It's not the strongest card ever, but it is very powerful. Um, Galaxy Wink, I'm going to give this card just a straight up 6 out of 10. Because you are paying 1. That's a 1 Dawn investment, and you're getting 2,000 out of it. Just Even if your opponent has no characters. You're getting, for, for 1 Dawn investment, you're getting 2,000 powers worth. So I'm going to give it a 6 or a 7 out of 10 just right off the bat there. I'll, just, I'll, I'll call it a 6.5. The minus 1,000 is okay. It's going to help you uh, take out characters. Uh, but the triggers... I almost wish the trigger was just straight up draw a card or something. I, I feel like the trigger... Um, I, it, it will help you protect your characters that are in play. Because it's, it's, it's uh, plus 2,000 power for the turn. So it, it will help you protect uh, characters that are rested. But at the same time, if they're attacking your life already to trigger an effect like this, <laughs> they're probably not attacking your characters. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of that trigger. And it's almost counterintuitive. But that effect is very solid. Uh, I, th I think the main effect is very nice. Okay, next card, we got Dragon Breath. Okay. Dragon Breath is... Pay 2, Revolutionary Army type. It's, it's a main effect. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 3,000 power or less. And up to one of your opponent's stages with a cost of one or less. Ah, one or less, guys? Come on. Um... What all does that hit? I mean, I guess most stages are really cheap. But I, I always think of like, okay, if they were thinking about... Um, I'm not saying they're going to do this, but there's been a lot of talk about maybe they're going to unban Moby Dick. The uh, That's the, the Whitebeard stage. Why wouldn't you make this card at least hit a two or less? Because that way it could hit Moby Dick or it could hit... Uh, what's the other one called? I think uh, Innie's Lobby. Ah, I, I don't know how to spell that. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, it is. It's it's Innie's Lobby. It's a two-cost stage as well. So it's almost like, okay, you know, th this card's not bad. The card, th You know, th this card's fine. Because you can you can KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 3,000 power or less. That already is solid. And the trigger, activate this card's main effect. Again, very solid. This can help get the little blockers out of your way. Like the little, you know, one-cost choppers, one-cost beige, the two-cost 2K blockers, the three-cost 3K blockers. It can help you get all of that out of your way. Um, and potentially also net you a, a stage KO as well, or, you know, take taking out a stage. Uh, but anyway, I, I don't think the card's crazy. I just think the card's solid. I'm, I'm going to give this like a 7 out of 10, because this is just a nice little two-cost, get that blocker out of my way card. And if you have any kind of power reduction in your deck, like with Gordon, with uh, any of the cards we saw earlier in this, in this um, you know, in the red review, then this is going to be even better, right? This You get an even be bigger range on it. And remember, one of the cards we looked at, the Nef the, the uh, Ain card, I almost said Vivi, the uh, Ain card that we looked at, the 7 cost 6k, you combo this with it, and you can KO anything in the game. 
for a two card combo while establishing a 6k body you can ko any card in the game so so yeah ko three your opponent's characters with 3000 power less yeah so you set their power to zero and then combo with this very solid okay i'm gonna give it like a seven out of ten like i said i think it's really good for getting the job done that you need it you know it, it does its job very well okay this is a one cost impel down red impel down revolutionary army type card with the effect of counter up to one of your revolutionary army type characters gains plus 2000 power until the end of your next turn until the end of your next turn hang on a second all right one cost up to one of your revolutionary army type characters gains plus 2000 power until the end of your next turn so he will have plus 2000 power on your turn right am i, am I understanding that correctly and then trigger you can activate this card's counter effect okay so i mean if if you can so if they try to take out one of your character well revolutionary army type characters not leader by the way just characters revolutionary army type characters you can pay one to give your character plus 2000 until the end of your next turn so this turn will end if you're if, uh, assuming your character survives that they're attacking this your your character will be plus 2000 power on your on your your following turn there until the end of your next turn so so yeah not bad uh, i think it's kind of kind of weird it's it's kind of a weird effect but hey it, it is very it is potentially very powerful i'm gonna give this a 6.5 out of 10. okay then we get over to green so uh green will be in the next video so overall guys i'm not gonna lie i wasn't like incredibly impressed by anything coming out of red and y'all tell me if i missed anything like maybe there's a card i overlooked or i didn't read properly or i didn't understand but the only cards that seemed really really good in my opinion for red was monkey d dragon this is this is you know this is one of the srs and, and this card guys this card is just outstanding like this this card is incredible uh nice 2k uh this card was fine you know uh mask deuce is a good searcher for ace i guess these two were kind of kind of meh back route was solid this one was really good i actually did think this one was really good this was this was decent it's almost like red got nothing but a bunch of decent cards and then like two insanely powerful cards in um in uh I would say back rats at least like really solid, maybe not insanely powerful, and then uh, good old dragon here. But yeah, other than that, guys, I mean that's that's pretty much it for red. Um, again, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit. Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. How good do y'all think these cards were for red? Um, I thought they weren't bad, but I also thought they weren't crazy. I only thought there was only one card that really like knocked my socks off, so to speak, and that was um, that was dragon. Uh, dragon was like okay and i'm not talking about the leader here i'm talking about the actual character the character seemed like top notch like okay wow this this is really solid uh but everything else was just like kind of kind of mid almost you know I, well, I don't know i shouldn't say mid it was at least average though i know that kind of means similar to the same thing but y'all know what i mean well, right, guys that's about it for this one y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below is there a card that i looked over that you're just like bro that card is so much better than you think y'all tell me down in the comment section below um, I love doing these reviews. I love looking at the new cards. This is the best way to learn the new cards as they're coming out for us in the West. Because remember, yes, we will not have access to these cards for another like five months or four months or whatever it is. But we're still going to see decks popping up over in the East. So we need to know what the cards do. Especially when I start reviewing games from the championships over in the East. Like we have to know like, oh, that's that one card or, oh, you know, that's that's that one card aim that does this or that's that card Curly to Dan, the new Curly to Dan that does this. We do have to know what the cards do. All right, guys, that's about it. Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think. Again, down in the comment section below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not already. And yeah, until next time, guys. Peace.